Uh, what do you think? How do you think the commission got so far? Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. What show are you with? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Do you have a release for me to sign? Because I'm not going to do an interview without a release. I'm PR. He doesn't do interviews. Sorry. No interviews. No Drunken Zombie video review. So as I promised uh, to the filmmaker, our first uh, video review is going to be It's My Party and I'll Die If I Want To by uh, Scotchworthy Productions. Right. Wes, why don't you run down the synopsis of the movie for Oh us? boy. Well, there was a lot of tits and uh, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Basically, um, it started off with a um, guy that kind of looked like Rob Zombie a little bit, which is pretty sweet. We had the Rob Zombie beer. Yes. Yeah, yeah they... Um, there was this old house in the 20s or 30s, what was it? I think 30s. in the 30s. Yeah. 30s. Old decades. The 30s. 30s. Yeah. Decades. Yeah. That's right. It took yeah. a 10 year period. Let's specify a year. Yeah. So 1930s. And exactly. Apparently bad stuff happened. And they had this really creepy record player that plays this like old creepy ragtime music. Because old timey music means evil. He killed a bunch of people. Yeah. And, uh, he killed his whole family. Yeah. That's right. Oh yeah, there was that sweet, like, it starts off like really, really strong with like a lot of gore just right off the bat. And then it heads right into exposition for a while. <laughs> but then there's tits, so it works. There's yeah. nudity. The nudity is quite nice. But basically, yeah, he he breaks. Uh, they break one of the horror rules like right away. Just kills two kids like right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. very no cool. qualms about it. A lot of it on camera too. Like we were just like, yeah. what the fuck? So we knew we were in for a good it's ride. It's very too. It just smashes the her skull completely. It's oh yeah, it's not like a real quick thing either. It's like. Pretty very nice. Of it. Oh man, very nice, crazy. So then we uh, get to present day, and uh, it's Sarah's birthday, who apparently has her birthdays on Halloween, and her That's friends cool. plan a uh, birthday party in this abandoned house, Burkett Manor. Well, they don't really table. tell her first. Like she spends well, like, half the movie, party, yeah. like yeah, thinking that everybody forgot. I thought it was Sixteen Candles Part Two because she's like, my friends forgot my birthday. Seventeen all, candles so. of blood. And then she took a long, drawn-out shower sequence, which I didn't really which have was any very nice. mm -hmm. So a surprise party, she finally finds out, shows up, but uh, the evil, the, uh, the horror, as they called it, gets reawakened in this house and all hell breaks loose. You're missing a vital point, though, because before that is an extended martial arts training sequence. Yeah, it's kind of some purpose. Yeah, really, really cool. Nice Follow on to uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorites. Did they have a lot of really uh, obscure, like, kind of references to other horror movies I caught? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, Nightmare 4, um, there's a part where this creepy ghost nail comes out of the wall. <laughs> this guy catches his arm on it. So there might be a nod to Hellraiser a little bit. Probably one of the most exciting parts of this movie was the inclusion of Tom Savini. Oh, yes, yeah. Tom Savini was in it. It was for a uh, for a low no budget horror movie to have Tom Savini in it, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he actually was he, he was actually probably one of the best parts of it. it really, yeah. had a nice little take in there that it was just fantastic. Oh, yeah. And uh, horror hound, we actually ran into Tom Savini. We did. So uh, we asked we, him about this movie. We asked him about this movie, and this is this is actually uh, what he had to say about it. Uh, one of the movies that we've been we helping promote uh, is um, It's My Party and I'll Die If I Want To, which you were involved with. Uh, how did you get involved with, with that? Which movie? Um, it's My Party and I'll Die If I Want To. Yeah, how, how does everybody know that? It's something they shot at my school. I haven't even seen it yet, nor have they given me a copy. I want a copy of that movie. Is it any good? Did you see it? Okay. I, had, I, had no, I don't know anything about it except I was in it. So that was Tom Savini. Yeah. Uh, still hasn't seen the movie, apparently, but, you know, yeah. he'll get a chance. I'm still cold. Mm -hmm. uh, one goes over there, you know, knocks some heads together. Yeah. Great some skulls. Right. Uh, probably one of the, the exciting announcements about this movie that Tony sent me was that uh, it was in a uh, full moon like film festival and it won and the top prize was if you win they got distribution through uh, full moon. That's it's, great. And full moon is the company that released uh, oh. Puppet Master Absolutely. and the uh, subspecies, subspecies series. So yeah. they're in good company. So uh, so we're gonna rate this on our uh, 3B horror system. Uh, we're basically gonna use the 3Bs of horror. Uh, boobs, blood, and body count. 
So let's start off with uh, the boobs. Spectacular. They Absolutely. were, they were truly spectacular. Oh, yeah. Who wants boobs? You get something like right away. Yeah, you do. Know, pretty good. Not yeah. over, not a lot, but I mean, there's one nice, uh, uh, completely meaningless, gratuitous uh, shower scene. Oh yeah, that was yeah. spectacular. A gratuitous shower scene is never meaningless yes. days. Wow. <laughs> and they definitely, definitely uh, drew the plot together. Oh, but you're nice. forgetting, you're forgetting about Tom Savini's brilliant run. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was very nice. That was very slapstick. Well, names, uh, we're gonna, you know, we're zombies, we're drunken zombies. So. Uh, we rate everything on brains, so Absolutely. we're gonna rate this on brains. So I'm going uh, four brains. What about you, Wes? Are we still talking about boobs? Yes. Everybody's gonna rate oh, the boobs. Four out of what? Five. Five. Five? Five? Yeah. Five. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to go with four because uh, they were brains. Yeah. Nice. I'll, I'll go. I'll go three. Uh, though they were were uh, spectacular. I, mean, I could use a little more. Uh, I mean, we had a couple other other girls there who were dressed very. Very scantily, and uh, we got nothing from them. So, so I'll give myself three. And before Randy answers, I do have to point out that the first set of boobs was uh, basically Asian schoolgirl boobs. So yeah, that's yeah, it's worth checking out if you're into that. That's stuff. true. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's crazy, Uncle Randy. What do you what do you got? Uh, no, I'll go with four. It makes sense. You know, there's four. It's, well, there was four of them. Plus, you know, there's a hot redhead, so you got to at least bump yes, it up a bit for true. that. So yeah. Randy loves his redheads. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, four. Yeah. All right, so let's go blood. Uh, basically, blood covers the amount of blood and gore and sort of the quality, special effects, if you will. So mm-hmm. I think I'm going to go a good four and a half brains on this one. The The blood quality was good. The quantity was good. I thought the special effects were amazing. What about you, Wes? I would say four, definitely, because uh, there's that one part where uh, there's just, like, blood spray coming out, and there's just, yeah, what's up? It was very well done. Yeah. Although some of the, the, the blood span was kind of Monty Python esque, uh, the <laughs> overall special effects though were spectacular. So there's one shot where like someone's heart stripped out, and there's a shot like between her lungs and the scene pump and everything. That was really well done. Um, the, again, as far as the special effects themselves go, uh, it was spectacular. So I'll give that. that that's why I'll give it an absolute four for blood. Very nice, crazy Uncle Randy. I gotta give it a five. You know, I mean, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't really ask for anything uh-huh. more. Uh, the yeah, the the part when the girl's heart gets ripped out, like part of the rib cage falls right next to it. And it's like that's awesome. That's yeah. great attention to detail. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I thought the main creature in it was very cool. Very good. Yeah. Uh, very good. It, you know, it, there's only so much you can do with special effects, and you know, the guy that played it did such a great job. Do we know his movements, his movements, the noise. You know, the way he moved. It's like. The actor really pulled off the outfit, so it was very good. Another little uh, special effect I want to point out, like we talked about before, the uh, the child death scenes at the end. Yeah, they take you get basically to see him just beating this kid with a hammer, and then it shows like the full effects and everything. And it was uh, they they do, they do a really good job right off the bat, so you know mm-hmm. when you see that you're you're pretty much locked in for yeah. It really this movie does a good job of really pulling you in at first. So um, I mean, with the amount of gore. So. It's just it's kind of a, almost a special effect. They do, uh, like we talked about, the, sort of some of the homages that they did. Mm-hmm. Is they kind of uh, pay like a little uh, homage to Creep Show with the way they transition stuff because it very much moves from like comic book panels and, and, and that. stuff like that. But it worked so. really well with this movie. Oh yeah, know. it's fantastic. Usually, I, I think I'd find something like that distracting. So as far as the, these transitions go, they're they're interesting. But uh, one thing I probably would say is they were a little long. They were. Yeah, the guy will tell I really didn't was. mind. You know, yeah. for the most part, I didn't mind during the party setup montage. Yeah, that was old. Mm-hmm. It seemed to draw it a little yeah. bit. But well, the other thing yeah. is there was so much original music in it. You know, it yeah, wasn't. There was. It wasn't canned music. It wasn't mm-hmm. like you know, mm-hmm. uh, public domain stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was like all original stuff. I, you stuff. know, it it fit for what it was. So the, uh, you know, I'm happy. It also has uh, the <laughs> movie also has one of my favorite lines in I would almost say movie history because I I, have, I we yes. had to rewind it and listen to it just to mm-hmm. make sure I heard it right. You say he's going to try to work it into every conversation he ever has. I think I now. need to. Yeah, mm-hmm. like could be your catchphrase. Yeah, when uh, she's getting ready for the final battle, she said, "I'm going to fuck start your face." Fuck start your face. Yeah. That's really good. I enjoyed that. Which let's bring up the the just. For the spur of the uh, the final fight scene, yeah. pretty good job. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah. And we know she knows karate from the montage earlier. Yes, yeah. so it does pay off. So it's time to go to town. Yeah, there you go. The final scene was was actually was well done. So uh, let's jump right into uh, body count. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go good. Uh, I think I'm gonna go five on this one. Five brains. 
Because there were so many deaths in this movie, and they were all like pretty good. So no, the uh, the nice thing I'm gonna have to go five as well because almost all of them were completely different from the other ones. Like yeah. yes, they were so imaginative and finding like new ways to kill someone. It wasn't the same shit. It was just. I don't know. Well, there's so many other movies. It's cool. like, you know, they show the original the original deaths from the 30s, and then usually they mimic it yeah. in the, you know, mm-hmm. now. Yeah. And they didn't. I mean, everything was completely different. I was yeah. pretty happy with that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. Is that, that's something I thought that... that, that uh, I don't know. I like my deaths to be original, to be a little crazy. I said, though, I mean, the, the, well, the first ones where, you know, he tears her heart out it was spectacular. Um... There's a couple other ones where, where, where uh, like the, the girl's like heart apparently explodes, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, the first we we saw bludgeonings, and uh, so and so I, I you know as much as I love the effects, I'm gonna have to give it a three on this. Just because again, I, I kind of guess I want a little more, a little more craziness. Yeah, I'll give it a solid four. Uh, I enjoyed it. They were all interesting. It kept me in the movie. You know, it was fun. So overall, if you had to rate the movie overall, one to five. I think I'm going to go a full five. I'm going to go a solid four. Um, just because the, the exposition, like, in the beginning kind of dragged a little bit. It could be trimmed up a little bit. I think it would be a really tight movie. Yeah, I want to you, I agree with Wes, but I think you're a three, mainly because uh, it seems like a lot of the special effects were really cool. Some of the horror shots were really awesome. But some of the basics seem to be kind of lacking a little bit. Like, the exposition could have been cut down significantly. Um, not the shower scenes. Oh, not the shower scenes. No, no, leave that there. No. That's perfect. No, that's a must. No, Maybe no. longer. Um, but this is, this is like some some of the, the, the plot points were just kind of like mu- a little muddy. I think they could have done uh, the cut it a little bit tighter. Um, some of the shots even could have been you know I mean if they got a cinematographer who would use a tripod because that was that kind of bugged me a little bit because as steady as it was you know they, all the really cool stuff yeah they have down but the basics are kind of. They get like a couple guys who you know just just know straight up film. I mean nothing crazy. That probably helped out a lot. For for a full length movie though, I also have to say it, this is a really good job. Yeah, this I mean for the, for your first first movie, this is amazing. Um, and keeping that in mind, you know, there's there's not a whole lot of horror movies I own. I've seen a lot, and I just don't buy a lot of them because I do, I usually don't watch them multiple times. But I will buy this. You know, when it comes out through Full Moon, I'll definitely yeah. buy a copy. Uh, I recommend everybody else buy a copy. I, I really oh, yeah. enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, again, so I think that I definitely recommend people buy it because, I mean, especially for a no budget uh, first indie film, mm-hmm. this is, a, is great. Uh, all I was saying, I know that uh, I think uh, the director said he was going to do another pass on some of the yeah. editing stuff. As since a, they got picked up by Full Moon, so. so maybe that's why I don't want to be picked up. Yeah, I don't want to say too much. Uh, too much about it because. They may be changing some stuff that I'm like, oh, wait, that's weird, that's awkward. And they may be changing that, so I, I don't know. The original we saw, we saw, I say we all, we would all recommend this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I do know they have some uh, short films they've done up on their MySpace. Um, I'm not, I don't 100% remember the uh, website off the top of my head, but it will magically appear right down In here. In this mm-hmm. general area. Yeah. Right around yeah, here. Right here. So if you want to know more about these uh, filmmakers, definitely go to their website right, right here. Uh, we're going to put a link up to them on our, uh, our website, so stop by, check out our links, stuff like that. And I have to say, for uh, this is, I think, one of the first uh, Drunken Zombie Gems, because uh, we, I think yeah. we all really enjoy this movie. Mm-hmm. So. This, yeah, this is one. It was, it was solid. You know, I, even though I gave it a three, yeah, overall, it still it was a solid movie. Fantastic. Well, for Drunken Zombie, it's my party. I'll die if I want to. Be sure to check it out. Absolutely. Cheers. Why, hello there, and welcome to the first installment of Life Lessons. Today, I'd like to talk about something that happens to all of us. It's the one time a month when your loved one becomes a raving monster. Find one minute, and the next becomes a slobbering beast that would rather tear your eyes out than look at you. All I know, they turn evil. Sadly, the only way to get rid of someone who has gone through the change Pull it through the heart. So basically, get a gun, cock back the trigger, take them out. It's the only way you're going to be happy, and you'll thank me for it. Uh, maybe alcohol, possibly, but you'd have to convince them to drink it first, and that could cost you an arm or leg. So remember, 
when someone goes through the change, shoot them through the heart. It's the only way. This has been Crazy Uncle Randy with life lessons on werewolves. Werewolves? Who the fuck said anything about werewolves? Hey, this is Dave here with, from DrunkenZombie.com here with probably one of my biggest influences, probably the, the person who made me want to get into to film and, and video uh, in the first place, uh, Mr. Tom Savini. I was wondering, uh, you've done a uh, prolific uh, uh, body of work. Uh, what, what is the, what's one of the things that you said that, wow, that was the one thing that I did that was really, really cool? Like your, oh, your favorite thing. I don't have any favorites. No, it's like your children. You don't have any favorite children. But I'm kind of fond of the grandfather makeup in Texas Chainsaw. Lizzie in the closet from Tales from the Dark Side. Fluffy. I mean, that's what I mean. See, you think of one, makes you think of another. There, I have no favorites. I have no favorite movies. You know, it's just too many of them. You can't, you can't make a list like that, you know? Were they were particularly like, difficult that you're like, you didn't think you could pull off and you, it's just... Well, fluffy. I'd never done a fluffy before, but that was my first, yeah. So, but now, now it's like uh, one of those things that's in your toolbox, something you know how to do, you know? It's a, they're all a lesson. Awesome. Uh, one of the things, uh, recently we've had a lot of influx of uh, more like digital effects and uh, a lot more just everything being done CG. Since you are like almost the master of uh, practical effects and, and, and prosthetics, uh, has this affected the, your work at all? Or No, no. Uh, I love CG, CGI when it's done well and it, only, and it helps us. It only helps us. They always begin with us. We create the stuff and the computer guys enhance it, you know, so it just makes our job easier. Uh, at your school, I've been getting into more of, of the the CG working with. Or are you still no, strictly? Teach it, all. Uh, teach it all. Yeah, they have to be aware of it as a as a potential special makeup effects artist. They have to be aware of what the possibilities have, how they have increased with the use of CGI. You know, oh, that'll, that'll always be the case. Yeah. Excellent. All right. uh, th thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah bet. Good luck with it. Nice right. to meet you. Yeah, this is Dave with uh, Drunken I'm Zombie. Call those damn guys and get my copy of It's My Party. <laughs>